Well, I've got lots of in-car ozone generators now. Well, lots of fake ones, because the majority of that have come through, and I ordered from quite a few different sellers, are these fakes that have the same sort of packaging as the real thing. But when you look inside, and I'll just uh, hold a torch up to this so you can actually see what's inside. When you look inside, it's just an LED that's in that. It's not the uh, ozone generating device. So quite a lot of fakes until this one came through. And as I say, identical packaging. You can't tell the difference. Um, it really is the same case. And, and you can't just go by colour of the case because this is a fake and it's black. But this one is not a fake. So let's get that fakes out of the way. Here's the real thing, and if you look up close, you can see there's a lamp inside with a mesh wrap around it. And initially I thought, well, it's possible that if they were a bit wise to this, the fakers could even wrap mesh around an LED or something like that. But this is the real thing, and I'll just power it up. Once again, I'll put the positive on the end pip and the negative just on the housing. And when I turn it on... Don't know if you can see that, it's very dull. This is why they chose to light the blue LED at very low intensity, but that's glowing very dull blue. And if I sniff, oh, I don't even need to sniff it now. I can smell the ozone from here. It really is generating ozone. So let's open it up and see what's inside. Off goes the power supply. So if you screw off this end, the first thing that's visible is an NE2 style lamp. Now these are little neon indicator lamps, but this one is obviously got blue phosphor. And around it is a metal mesh. And I'm going to take the whole circuit board out. Is this is where it goes all pingy because it's uh, got the little positive stud here. Same, the same spring holding the positive stud up but somewhat different circuitry inside from the fakes. The fakes have a circuit board that looks like this, and look, it's even the same shape. Same shape and size, spring in the same position, but they've decided to replace all these complicated, expensive components with a resistor and a transistor that doesn't do anything. But anyway, let's take it to bits, and, uh, well, let's take it to bits, but let's explore it a little bit further and reverse engineer it. So this is a two transistor, what looks like a Royer inverter. It looks like the typical cold cathode driver you'd find in uh, the little case, case lamps for um, PCs. Right. Okay, so how it's generating the ozone is it's applying high voltage. The, the Transformer has one a fairly heavy primary winding, and then it's got three separate high voltage windings to keep the separation better. Uh, so it's got the high voltage winding, it's got a capacitor in series. So uh, there's we'll start with the output. Here's the output winding the transformer, the high voltage. One side of that is connected to the negative. So one side, the, one side of the secondary is connected to ground, and it goes up to the wire mesh. Now, the output, the other one, has a capacitor. This, the, using a capacitor, this is also... Do I, have a little, uh, do I have a little cold cathode inverter somewhere? Here we go. Similar circuit arrangement. Um, this is a cold cathode inverter used for the PC case, cold cathode lamps, the thin fluorescent lamps. And they use a capacitor in series with each of the outputs to limit the current because it means in each half wave the output of the in inverter, <coughs> only a certain amount of current can go through the tube. Without these capacitors, uh, the tubes would pretty much saturate the transformer. They'd they'd impose a, a very high load and you'd see the current fly up and things would start getting very hot, uh, like the transistors. But anyway, so there's a little capacitor to limit the current. Then it's going down through that capacitor. The two leads are just into one pad of this neon lamp. And I'm just going to draw the neon lamp as a little box, I think. 
and that's the little electrode going up inside. There are two electrodes, they've just commoned them together. Then they've got a mesh round the outside. And they've soldered onto it and it's going to the ground connection, which is the other side. So basically speaking, you've got high frequency, high voltage across this. Now, the middle electrode, the, to generate the ozone, you have to apply a high voltage across um, air, basically. It, it generates the ozone by creating a corona discharge, which splits the oxygen molecules apart. And they go from being O2, which is normal oxygen, which is two, two molecules of oxygen joined together. Um, it splits them apart, and some of them join together as temporary clusters of three molecules which are of oxygen, which is ozone. And it's very unstable, so it wants to get rid of that, uh, the spare oxygen molecule. It wants to revert back to O2, and to get rid of it, it just, det it just anything that's can be oxidised, anything it can attach to, it bonds onto it. And that's what gives it the, the air cleaning effect. <clears throat> However, to create the corona discharge, if you apply high voltage, if you've got two electrodes and you apply a high voltage between them, instead of, uh, it would normally just spark between the two electrodes. If, however, you put a barrier in there to stop it, and the barrier is the glass of the lamp, so now we've got the mesh on one side connected to one terminal, and we've actually got an electrode with the gas acting as the second terminal with the layer of glass there. And what happens now is the gas just conducts. It means that the reason they use the neon lamp, it's a very convenient way of doing it. And it also means that you get an absolute 100% electrical conduction onto that side of the glass envelope. Then the output, because the electricity can't just arc through, it forms tiny little sparks to create a corona discharge between the um, inner lamp and the outer mesh. And the mesh is probably stainless steel because um, it's kind of stable under the oxidising effect of ozone. And that's what uh, it, the air that's passing through that, any just ambient airflow around that, is when it passes through that corona discharge uh, on the surface of this glass lamp and the mesh, it uh, gets converted to ozone. Now look at the input circuitry. It's quite simple. It is the Royer circuit. It's the simplest form of the Royer circuit. Now, I'm going to try and draw this in the simplest way possible. All the windings, are, I'll just go through it as, as we do it. So here's the plus volts, which is coming through a choke. So that's our plus 12 volts. I'm going to just draw this as a standard Royer circuit then, but in a slightly different format. So there are, there's the, the primary winding is sender tapped. It's got 12 volts in the middle of the primary winding, and then each of the primary windings are connected to transistors. I'm drawing this in the simplest possible I can actually, way I can think of doing it. Um, There's a capacitor across here, and then the sec there's a secondary winding, a, a, a feedback winding, connected between the bases of the transistors. These are just going down to zero volts, um, and there's another connection from the 12 volts to one of the uh, transistor gates with a resistor. In this case, it's a uh, red, red, orange, 22K. That's quite a high volume. And the purpose of that is to just basically kick-start the circuit and get it running. Um, when it's running and it's oscillating, as the current uh, is generated in each of the windings, it drives the opposite transistor on while the other one's being driven off um, and vice versa. So it's a self-oscillating circuit once it starts that's based around the transformer so the oscillator resonates at, at its natural frequency. In this circuit, they've used two resistors um, for the transistor, for driving to the transistor bases, but in this one it's the simplest, they've just used one. The 
Pastor 104. That's about 100 nano. I think that's 100 nano. I think it's 100 nano looking at it. I think it's a 104. Uh, and the transistors are... C945, they're just common NPN transistors. So really, the this actual thing inside is really simple. It's um, it's just basically, it's a little high voltage oscillator circuit, and the corona discharge end based in that mesh wrapped around a lamp. It's the first, uh, first time I've seen it in this style. I've seen I've seen ozone generators that used a glass test tube with a coil of metal, that had, a sheet of metal that had been rolled up, pushed in, and then had scrunched on the outside. But the, using it like this is actually a kickback almost to a, an ancient device called the violet ray, which generated ozone when you put it actually on your, on your hand. And it was just a gas discharge tube with a vacuum in it. Um, and the vacuum was drawn to the point that it would also... It would glow. That's why they called it the violet ray, because it's the, the gases in the... the Vacuum would glow a sort of purpley colour, um, and it where it, you, it made contact with your hand, you were the ground reference, and tiny little sparks would appear. So it's almost like that. It's quite nice actually, but very very dull. The actual you wouldn't see the corona discharge because they've chosen a blue lamp, a, the any lamp with the blue phosphor, and that kind of swamps out any visible discharge. But it does give a very soft blue glow and that also shows it's working because it wouldn't glow if there wasn't current flowing passively between the inner electrodes and the outer mesh. So there you go. The, um, I'd like to tell you where I got this one but to be honest I don't 100% know because I got two packages so far that had the black one in it. Uh, one was just loose and one was in the package. That one, so this one's the fake and I'm not sure, 100% sure which supplier these came from because I can't identify it from the envelopes. Uh, just basically two envelopes, one with a black one that worked and one with a black one that didn't, so I'm not really sure. So there we go, it's a really super simple circuit and it does generate a very noticeable amount of ozone. So there you go, uh, they do make real ones.